Okay. All right. So, so just to, right. So we'll call this to order. This is the environmental sustainability committee, uh, January 13, 2021. And, uh, roll call please, Jack. Sure. Hood. Here. Wilson. Present. And Lazarus. Here. All right. All are here. So just following our, um, agenda, just the next item on the agenda is public comment. I'll usually try to reserve the public comment till the end since everybody's had an opportunity to kind of hear what we've discussed and um, leave that open. So uh, if no one has public comment at this point, if we could just pass it on to three and I'll reserve, we'll reserve public comment till the end if that's okay. Makes sense to me. All right. So um, let's move on to uh, um, the approval of the December 2nd, 2020 minutes. Um, so Rick and Shelly, have you had an opportunity to review those minutes? Yes. Yes. Uh, anything on there that you care to change or? Oh, they look good to me. Okay. So is there a motion to approve uh, the December 2nd, 2020 minutes? I uh, so move. So that's Rick is motion. Is there a second or move? Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, and um, roll call, please, Jack. Oh, you there, Jack? Sorry, I got myself muted. Uh, oh. Lazarus? Aye. Osa? Yes. Hood. Yes. Three eyes, motion carries. So um, let's move on to the discussion items. And uh, maybe just uh, before I get to those, uh, someone else has joined us. Is that right, Jack? I just can't see him. Uh, yes, so it looks like actually uh, at least a couple students from Warren Township High School here. So from the Mother Earth uh, Concerned Citizens Group. So, hey, students, welcome. Thank you for joining. Uh, so actually, if you um, students would like to just identify themselves, just your, just give us your name and um, yeah, and where you're from. Um, my name's Caitlin, even though it says Daisy, that's my mom's name. And I'm a junior at Warren Township. All right, welcome, welcome. And then there's another student as well. Hi, I'm Kelly, Kelly King. Um, I'm at Warren, I'm, I'm a senior and I have a, I attend the MEX meetings. Okay, thank you very much for joining. So um, there'll be a time we're gonna go through some business that we're um, going to address. And then when we get down to public comments, uh, I'd like to maybe, um, if you have some ideas or thoughts, we would like to incorporate those. Um, it's important to me and I think to the rest of the committee, what you guys think, so. So thanks for joining. So let's go on to the uh, first item. So there's a, our discussion on prioritizing environmental matters in the village of Gurney. Uh, so um, this item, I think, and I think Rick, you had some similar thoughts. Uh, we're just trying to find our way here in terms of uh, how we're gonna address environmental matters in, in Gurney and um, what's the proper channels to do that. So just maybe if I could just briefly talk about the committee itself. Uh, the committee itself, again, they're not a formal recommending body, but uh, rather it's intended to be um, a group or a committee that gathers information, puts together reports, and then presents them to the village board. And then even within our own committee, there are some tasks or things that we could do or undertake um, formal education or education of the residents of Gurney or other things or other ideas that our board comes up with or committee comes up with. So it's, we're in kind of a unique situation. Um, and I think it's raising awareness is probably one of the biggest concerns. So the question is, um, at least in the first part, uh, how do we prioritize those matters? So Shelly or Rick, do you have any ideas on, on how that uh, might take place? in terms of us figuring out what's most important or what we should spend our time on? Well, I know it's in, what is important to me and what drew me to the committee, but I 
have no idea how to prioritize that. Okay. Well, maybe that's a priority all by itself is that it's what's important to you. So, yeah. How about you, Rick? What do you think? I, I guess from my standpoint, we probably need to start with some developing some uh, overarching goals and, and what we hope to accomplish, then just start listing the, uh, the uh, possible ways to further those and, and then prioritize that list once we have it. Okay. All right. Um, so I think, uh, so we have to come up with those goals and maybe that would be best left um, that offline we could exchange emails at least initially and then formalize them in um, potentially in our next meeting. So are there some goals that uh, Rick or Shelley that you have in mind or Jay, that you could you know, give us some thoughts too? You have some goals in mind? I guess one high level one that I've uh, been thinking is that uh, uh, we would like to improve the, uh, the village's, um, I guess the, the word image isn't exactly what I'm looking for, but uh, so that it um, uh, appeals to both private and corporate uh, citizens interested in locating in a, a community that uh, is environmentally sustainable. So kind of how, how you package the village and, and, and more than packaging actually you know, having the infrastructure and the, the uh, facilities the, uh, uh, the what what it takes to uh, make an attractive home for for those who value sustainability mm -hmm. no shelly how about you well it, it's on the agenda already it, oh, okay. it was my it was my number one of many goals is for styrofoam recycling in Gurney or Lake County. Okay. And okay, so that's um, and I believe is um, Diane. Are you on? I don't see you on Diana. Well, maybe she's not on yet. There's a person that had contacted Diane Sarufka. She had contacted me and um, has a, a interest in the styrofoam recycling as well. So um, maybe we can um, match you guys up and that would be something we could uh, spend some time working on. So is there something else, Shelly, that you're interested in or would be- a Well, I am really excited to see these students here. They are our future and the environment is their future and they're the people who are going to be need to teach their peers and uh, it's and I think they can help us in many many ways so this is excellent part of my other goals were was education and but uh, you need young blood and welcome everyone thanks Shelly Jack you have any thoughts in this area you got yeah no I, from the staff perspective i mean one of the things we discussed last time too is kind of putting together this and potentially and it kind of ties in your your next item too and how presenting our findings but essentially putting together sort of an environmental sustainability strategic plan so whether that's and it, you know being environmental concerns it's a long-term plan so looking at something you know maybe over the next 10 years of kind of how we reshape the village um, how we look at the long-term uh, development code um, and just kind of an overarching plan for the committee so that might be kind of a way we can <clears throat> take everybody's ideas kind of put them together in one formal document that eventually then the village board uh, could approve and could be a working document for the village mm -hmm. I, I like that I, I find that our strategic plan that we currently have that we've worked off of is um, you know for some of us checking boxes is a fun thing to do so that when we put things down, it's the staff and other, the village board and the mayor, everybody looks to accomplish those things. So it's a matter for us to bring it before them. And if we get it into a plan, then people like to do them. So as opposed to just saying, we wanna be environmentally sensitive, that doesn't go too far. 
So talking about styrofoam or other things, I think that's that puts some feet to it. So um, I'd like to do that, Jack. So I think that's that's a good suggestion. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the format for presenting committee findings to the village board. <clears throat> so obviously, I think it best would be if it was in writing. And the question is frequency. Um, and I just thought that at least initially, it might be that we might want to be more frequent, uh, just because just to kind of get ourselves known. So if it's once a quarter, and then just kind of feel out how much we need, how often we need to come back before the village board with um, what we found. So does anybody have any thoughts about that in terms of how we'll present our findings to the village board? Sorry. I feel I should say something, but I have nothing to say. <laughs> I was um, saying, I was saying a lot, but I was on mute. Oh well, then <laughs> go for it, Rick. No, I think a, a, a written uh, quarterly report um, that's fairly summarized and, and could be uh, posted on the village website as well. So mm -hmm. a good way. Um, periodically, we may want to uh, uh, maybe once a year give a. Uh, a formal presentation for the, the village board. But, uh, I think um, a, a written report's a, a lot easier to pull out. So maybe what we'll aim for is, is that at the end of our next meeting uh, in February, that we would have had three meetings, that at least we could provide an outline of who we are and uh, the general direction of where we're heading. Not, we probably won't have super specific, but maybe at least let the village board know um, that we're alive and well, if that's okay with you guys. And, and I think also uh, solicit their feedback for going in a direction that doesn't seem compatible with uh, their plan. We would like to have an opportunity to do a course correction. Right, yeah, that's, that's a good point. So if we, so at this point, are, um, Rick and Shelly, you okay with a quarterly written report to the village board? Yes. Mm -hmm. If we need to do more, we'll do more. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see, strategies for identifying develop, developing environmental trends. That's C. Um, any thoughts on that? Um, I can do that. I I do that as part of my job. So uh, in fact, I've started collecting pertinent files and I can maybe try and uh, uh, lump those together to share with the committee. And I don't know if there's value to distributing it further, but I can figure on at least once a month uh, uh, information submittals. So Rick, you'd, you'd provide us with uh, some ideas on strategies is that by email is that what you're suggesting uh not so much uh, strategies but um issues that are evolving that we may want to start getting on our radar okay um, yeah, i mean there was a long period of build up on ethylene oxide that probably would have been nice to have as a heads up um i put pfos on the agenda here because that's one that um, is definitely uh, getting a lot of attention right now. Okay. All right. Um, so let's just let's go down to that. If that's um, with other environmental discussions. Um, so the first one on D is sustainability development code. Um, so who was who would address that or brought that up? Is that? I, I, I mean, I can mention it. Rick okay. had sent us a uh, pretty interesting article based on that. So I wanted to bring it up for the, the committee. So essentially it's a growing trend too, as you develop your code, um, you know, for the students that are newer, um, or this may not be as familiar. So for all zoning and essentially all development, the village of Gurney has a code. So it has to meet, everything has to meet code, whether it's a new building or a modification to a building. Um, the code primarily is focused on 
safety. So we follow some of the strictest requirements for building safety. Um, that's part of why, you know, you go in an elevator and you know it's going to be safe and it's going to work. Um, and, you know, you know that uh, the best fireproofing materials are used in homes. It doesn't always take into effect environmental impact. So that's one of the things that a developing trend in communities is essentially looking at how when you're developing your code and your requirements, um, you're also looking at kind of the environmental and, and long term impacts of it. So if you're considering certain materials, um, what's the recyclability of the materials? Um, you know, how can you know, safely be, be disposed? If you are, you know, doing, if you're an older community and you're demolishing older buildings, how are you handling asbestos, stuff like that. So that's kind of, I think, the, the basis of it. So there's some interesting information in that, um, a lot of good pieces there, and that could be something I think that if we build and do a long-term plan could be part of the recommendation for future planning and, you know, the, the planning um, or any future policy documents is that they do take into effect our sustainability initiatives. Okay. One of the, one of the nice things was that organization uh, actually uh, uh, have uh, provides free access to their model codes. So if we do want to move, you know, if uh, it's time to review a given municipal ordinance, uh, you can pull out theirs and, and uh, pick and choose pieces of that so that the uh, revised uh, uh, document is, is more sustainable. Mm. Okay. Uh, so why don't we, um, anybody else have anything else to say about the sustainability development code? Are we Public going to stay in? Are we going to start looking through other people's codes and picking and choosing, or how do we, how do we advance that? Very good thought. Yeah, good next, I could mention a little bit on that too. Is what you know what we would do would be most likely a longer term um, part of the initiative of the committee. So if we put together some sort of long term environmental strategic plan, that could be one of the goals of it too. So what that does then is it's going to be outside of our there, there's good resources there, but it's outside of our purview and our ability to put together code that um, takes sustainability into effect. But what we could do is while, you know, both our community development departments and also um, any of the future of planning documents that would come out, that they would then take committee recommendations into effect too. So they would consider that as part of their building. So kind of a more of a policy high level approach is how I would think we would take it. But I think, um, oh, go ahead. I'm just looking for a little more background information. Um, what What is the extent of the uh, municipal authorities? You've got um, at least the uh, municipal uh, roadways, um, uh, building, definitely res residential building. Do you um, regulate commercial building as well? The village? So primarily most of it falls under the village's zoning ordinance. So we have one specific zoning ordinance for the village. Um, that is a document that essentially it includes um, all commercial and residential development. So they are broken out because they have different requirements. Um, so based on zoning, you know, so our, like a residential R1 would have a different requirement than commercial or industrial. Mm -hmm. um, what, so that would, what about know. things like uh, restaurants, uh, do, or does the village uh, license and like that, or is that going to determine that? For just general construction and operation? But, yeah, um, uh, I thought restaurants need uh, maybe it's a health department uh, license to operate. Is that done by the village or is it county? No, yeah, so health department is separate. So that is the Lake County Health Department. So they would do all the okay. perfect or for kind of the health related ones. So, okay. you know, if a new restaurant opens, for example, we'll do all the permitting for construction, um, you know, anything from like the vents, the hoods, all the connections, all electricity, plumbing. Uh, but then actually when it comes to operation and when they start to open, that's where then they start to work with the health department on, you know, food storage, stuff like that. Gotcha. I, I was a little disconcerted when I found out that the, uh, the uh, rappers that uh, 
uh, McDonald's sandwiches aren't in there for the in class. Uh, lots of uses for the chemical. So I think Shelly, for, I mean, part of what I think maybe would answer part of your question as far as the code, I'm not opposed to looking at other um, municipalities codes and seeing if they have something we don't. And it certainly could be part of our report. It doesn't mean that it would become code for us, um, but it, it puts it on the radar. And I think that's what, in part, what we're about. It's rising or raising things to a level of attention that, that we see before uh, we get told that something's wrong, uh, that we're more proactive. So uh, I like the idea of looking at other codes of other municipalities. So uh, maybe we could, uh, that could be one of the things on our goals to, to do. Um, so why don't we look at number two, PFAs and PFOs. Um, yeah, those are the uh, new pollutants of the week. Um, and you find them in places you don't expect them, like those uh, McDonald's records. Um, just wanted to bring that up as something to um, consider. Uh, one of the places that um, uh, they're used are in firefighting homes. So I don't know if the Bernini Fire Department does practice uh, work somewhere, but it could be that there could be some contamination there worth investigating. And also maybe look for alternatives. Um, so I don't, what's a, is the, Fire department under the village, or is it a right? Maybe right, Jack. Maybe you could address that as far as Jack would have some detail. But the fire department is part of the village government that we oversee. Okay. But Jack, I, it's yep. Diane. I have a question. I don't know the acronyms. Could you spell them out? PFA PFOs. That is spelled out. Uh, if you want to know what it stands for, yes. How polyfluorinated something pardon me polyfluorinated something uh i i i can send out a note with it but uh, um i i don't recall that yeah i have it's it's polyfluoral alcohol yeah. substances they're man-made yeah. chemicals oh. pfoa pfo nx um so essentially you know, they have a lot of uses in food commercial products um drinking water um so they have a variety of uses. They are largely being phased out in a lot of areas. And to answer Rick's question too, so after uh, his initial comment about you know the concern of, of firefighting foams, where it is a common, it's long been a, a use in firefighting foams, the Village of Gurney, we started to um, move away from it a few years ago. So we've been switching both our class one and class, or class A and class B foams. So there's two different foams you use, A and B. Um, both of ours, we've been moving away from PFOs. Oh, PFOs. Yep. So we have a new product. Yep. So we've phased it out entirely. We've been free for a few years now. Um, you know, it's one of those things that uh, originally, you know, as more education came out, they worked really well in firefighting foam. I, it's an industry standard. They were kind of a, a, a they help fight fires. But what they've learned more is that the off, you know, the, the negatives of it were concerning. So they've been moving away over a few year period um, and they're completely free, at least as of yeah. And uh, uh, their, their component in your Teflon coatings. So on your frying pans, uh, there's little bits of Teflon that come out in some of them. Are, are these the two um, chemicals that stay in the environment forever and they never break down? Is that what these are? Yeah, they call them forever chemicals, correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. And they're, they're primarily an issue, a uh, health issue in uh, drinking water. Right. Like to drinking water. There's, there's been a lot of, uh, yeah. not our village, but a lot of other villages consternation over this pollution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, why don't we move to recycling education? Uh, I think for this one, this is probably one of the main um, things again, meeting with our committee that hopefully we can provide education to uh, the uh, rest of the village with reference to how they can participate uh, in uh, having a cleaner environment. So we're hopeful that as time goes along, the different channels that we have available to us, whether it's our newsletter, our, our website, 
um, next door, social media, uh, basically using every method we have to communicate with the residents to help them understand the methods that they can recycle. So um, does any other member of the committee have any thoughts about um, that education? Yes, I do. It's Diane again. I'm a chatty Kathy. Sorry. Um, when we're looking at hey, this. Diane. Diane. Yeah. yeah. So, I, this, so you're not a member of the committee yet. I mean, we we're going to oh. talk So you're um, you can talk in public comment or if you have a few questions, that's OK. It's informal. But I mean, the members of the committee right now oh. are. OK. Are, yeah. So if that's OK. But I mean, I'd be happy to go ahead and ask, ask your question. It was a recommendation, not a question. When we're talking about recycling education, many of the communities around here um, formed like a cohort, like Evanston works with another town. Evanston works with Highland Park for recycling. That might be something to do too. Thank you. Thanks. Sure. Well, I was thinking one thing was in the newsletter. Uh, I don't what does it does newsletter come out quarterly? I don't remember how often it comes out. Yeah, it's um, quarterly. Yep, for the physical newsletter. For the physical newsletter, like a recycling corner where there is a, a article concentrating on because you know it it gets so overwhelming. There's so many things uh, hitting hard. One thing like everybody gets Amazon bubble wrap packages now. Um, what do I do with them? Now, they always say store drop-off, but do the stores, when you get to the stores, they say newspaper, uh, newspaper bags, uh, uh, dry cleaning bags, bags, all these other things. So we're all shoving them into the grocery stores, but are they just throwing them out? I guess we need to contact the, the other recyclable places and see what they accept. And then I would like to see something featured each quarter or however often on one particular thing, you know, glass. And what do you put your recyclables in? I, I constantly see people using the recycled trash cans and they put them in plastic bags and then they put it in the recycle. So just Starting someplace simple, like what do you put it in? It has to be a plastic, uh, it has to be a paper bag, cannot be plastic. Grocery bags don't go in the recycling curbside pickup. So just highlighting, not to overwhelm people because they won't concentrate on one thing at a time and um, spreading that out, information. That was just an idea. That is. It is. Rick, any thoughts on this? Uh, just that it sounds like we've got a, a, a uh, recycling corner uh, uh, editor for the uh, newsletter. There you go. There you go. So congratulations, Shelley. Look forward to the next edition. That's right. Just don't volunteer for anything. <laughs> How about um, you, Jeff? Anything on education? Yeah, no, I mean, that's one, especially after our, our last meeting and discussion, um, you know, it's we a lot of opportunity there. So we do education. Obviously, it's never enough. Um, as part of Swalco, uh, the village, we're a member of Swalco, so it's a solid waste agency of Lake County. We're a voting member, one of the largest members of Swalco, second to Waukegan. Um, and so what we've done is we've done quite a bit of gains in this recently. Swalco, we've been using their a lot of their education, their resources. They have a recycling coordinator that as part of our our fees into Swalco and taxpayer dollars, um, we have their expertise. So they've actually, uh, I have some information in the packet later on that, but actually Swalco has offered also to, to kind of have, serve a, an educational role with our committee too. Um, as far as kind of the, the recycling corner, I like having the dedicated one. We have it as a rotational piece. I do that every now and then where it'll be a, how do I recycle this um, for some of the common questions we get. Um, so definitely some good information there. We also, we had, a, a packet or essentially a PDF of how to recycle different items. It's old at this point. Um, so what, one of the ideas that came out of this is kind of a refresh of it, a modernized, you know, 2021 version of how to recycle this or video education, because uh, we see that a lot too, as we've kind of 
we've actually made some really good gains <clears throat> over the last five years, um, particularly in commercial recycling. So back in 2013, we did an analysis of our businesses. Our average recycling rate of Gurney businesses was 32%. So 32% of Gurney businesses were recycling. At that point, we initiated a commercial franchise. So all of the recycling now in Gurney, or all the, the uh, trash services for the village is done through waste management. So we already had that for residential. You have to use waste management. Well, now for commercial, waste management won the bid for it. And as part of it, they offer free recycling of up to a two yard container once a week for every business. Um, so we have increased our participation from in the 30s up to 52% of businesses now participate. So that's been a huge, we have a thousand businesses in Gurney. So having that increased rate is a huge volume. It, honestly, it's more than a lot of the residential when you take into fact all of our businesses that are doing six pickups a week, um, having that free recycling for them has been a huge, a huge um, opportunity that they weren't otherwise taking care of or participating in. So definitely some opportunity here um, to kind of continue education and work with residents and outreach. And we've got this wealth of students here and maybe they can tell us how I mean how do how do we reach out better to other students and the parents of students, other good ways to uh, spread the word. Yeah, would any uh, any Warren student like to address that? Just ways in which we can communicate better with you? Other than TikTok? <laughs> well, do you mean like um, students in general or Warren Township? Because if you're talking about like our age, then I would say social media is the way to go because then you could edu educate people that way. But if you'd like to get the students in our school specifically involved, you could coordinate with the MEX director because he, both of them are very involved and they like to give us opportunities to get involved in the community. So you can talk to them. And then as the group, we could talk and confer to see how we could bring this issue to the school. Yeah, um, I'm involved in a lot of clubs at Warren. So um, if we generate more ideas from here, it can easily be spread through multiple student clubs and then down in the student body, especially student councils that are trying to do a lot of uh, spring campaigns this year. So just reaching out to certain teachers, student leaders within our school would definitely be helpful or social media in general. So what yeah, I, do you guys use? For a more direct term of social media, um, a really broad platform that a lot of students use is Instagram. And it's really easy just to share accounts with other students. So if there's like an Instagram account that is specified for like putting out information about ways to recycle and ways that um, can help the community, a social media account would be really easy to follow and just people to keep track of. But also for the parents of students, I know um, a lot of parents or mine too, use the neighbor, the next door neighbor app. So I think that is a really good way to, um, well, with students mainly just like social uh, Instagram. All right. What, uh, would, do students wanna follow the village of Gurney on Instagram? I mean, how do, or do we, how do we make ourselves interesting? That's just. Yeah, um, do the, it may not be individual students, but definitely the student clubs will follow uh, local Instagram accounts. And even, even if they don't follow, they still view the stories and it's easy to sign up um, for uh, volunteering opportunities, just getting general information out on the Instagram stories and it can be um, reposted or reshared through um, the student base accounts. I definitely agree with Taylor. Um, Instagram stories using that feature of Instagram um, you can, I, and other students can share your stories and then that information will spread through. But um, so using a story and then posting something and then one student will share their story and then it will go around and then they can also click on the story to find your account. So if I shared something from your Instagram story, I could show it to my followers and then they see it and then it goes in a train in a way. So stories are really helpful. Posting. Um, I also really like uh, visual um, 
infographics and it's like i mean we know as um i'm trying to think of a way to like explain it so just like it's good to have i don't know but i like seeing posts and i like seeing the information simplized in one space so it gets the message out easy and so students can see what we're really trying to speak out and help in Gurney or in Lake County. Well, at least we have five people who will share our information and who knows where we'll go from there. Um, like to add on to that, specifically if you like work in coordination with the different student groups like student council or the environmental club or even like Red Cross, each of those accounts, they have their own Instagram accounts. They have hundreds of followers from the like students. So if you work in coordination with that, and even if you're like you were talking earlier about like the recycling corner that you could like publish in the a town letter or whatever, you could like do an infographic for that and then just send it to like all the school groups, and then that way they could post it to their Instagram, and then that way people could see it. Could you or someone give us a list of the groups and maybe their Instagram yeah, I can. handle? Yeah, I, yeah can. I can definitely do that for uh, student council and uh, our uh, Black Student Union. Mm -hmm. I could do that for the Environmental Club, um, Red Cross. I could do that for variety, variety of groups and I could also give you the name and the email of the teacher in charge. Who should she, she send it to? Jack yeah. or Tom? Yeah, but, yeah, feel free to send it to me too, so I can I can take it. I actually I just shared. Um, so actually, yeah, we we follow. So I shared the village's Instagram handle at Village of Journey. Uh, we do have an account. We definitely have a little less um, engagement ourselves than we do with Facebook and some of our other platforms, but it's one we've been expanding over time. Um, so that's definitely an option. But one thought I had coming out of this as we're talking about this is instead of having people follow the village of Gurney and having, you know, if they're interested in recycling, we post a wide variety of stuff. It won't just be recycling. Offering as a way that Max could get involved. What if Max created like a at Recycle Gurney Instagram page? Could, you know, through Max kind of help? We will be putting stuff out there. We have all the resources of how to recycle. You can figure out how to recycle anything in Gurney. Um, but a lot of people don't know where to go. So what if, you know, the student groups kind of led that initiative um, using your expertise as, honestly, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a millennial and I'm almost, you know, I'm, I'm not as uh, savvy in some of those regards for some of the newer social media. So if you guys well, want- What are you going to do about me? Because I'm, no. I'm in the boomers. Yeah. So that's just one of the, one of the ideas is that if you guys, you know, did want to do that, creating a recycle gurney. I mean, not to push it off on you, but I do think it could be a cool opportunity to get information out there and share it amongst the groups, you know, kind of taking a leadership role. So what are yours? Yeah. What do you think about that? Is there anybody that's interested in something like that or together you could do it? Yeah, because if you want to have like, like a specific page to talk about a specific issue, on an Instagram page, you could create specific stories. See if there's like a daily story where you could post just general information and specific stories like, and the name of it could be recycling. So if you're interested in recycling, you click on that story and it stays there forever. And it's just some like general pictures or infographics about recycling and what you want people to know if they want to get educated that way. So would you be okay if we worked with you and it doesn't have to just be you, but if you have some of your friends that would be interested, uh, then maybe you could connect with Jack. And if we had your email or some other, I don't know how else we'd connect with you that Jack, do you have their information? I do not, but I do have Mr. DeRay and then also um, Mr. Bloucher, I want to say. Um, so the other, uh, both I have the, the emails of both of the club coordinators for Max. So, so I could send them an email and request to forward my information. But with the students that are on currently, would you want to share your, do you have a, an email address with the high school that you'd like to share with Jack that we could communicate with you or some other form of communication? 
Taylor, didn't, how about you? Oh, there you go. <laughs> we don't have to talk, do we? Thank you, folks. Um, I also wanted to add that, like, um, I think Kelly and Caitlin were both talking about infographics and how, like, you could have an image on your story and stuff. So in my house, um, I printed out, actually, the, I think it's like an infographic of, like, what you can recycle um, from the Lake County website, and I just put it on top of our recycling bin. So I think that if literally anyone can easily get access to that and it's so helpful because it organizes like anything you can recycle and stuff so like i think on like instagram pages or through the club's um coordinators and stuff it would be really useful if just that infographic could get out because honestly that's all you need to learn what to recycle like at least a basic overview mm -hmm. Thanks. And Thank you, you got to remind people and remind people and remind people. Hmm. I really appreciate the input. I mean, this is great. I mean, it's just your level of interest and passion is what we need. It's a bunch of rules aren't going to carry it. It's going to be required. It's going to be from the ground up, like Shelly was talking about. It's uh, young adults that care about their environment, that that's what we need. You know, some of the, us old folks are kind of worn out on that. So we need some new passion. So uh, anything else on the education or otherwise, uh, if it's okay with um, students at Jackson to communicate with your teacher, the sponsoring teachers, and also with you, um, we don't, we're fine with communicating with the teachers, but we really are interested in communicating with you. Uh, because we you're right there and you know what it's like to be concerned about the environment and be 15 16 17 18 however old you are that's important to us to see it through your eyes um, so, if so yeah, go ahead you want us to make like pages or social media pages um you could just go through you could like see us in the email because in the environmental club, currently we don't have um, a social media officer, but I know many clubs have a social media officer. So if we were interested in making a social media page or if any other clubs have a social media officer, then you could talk with them specifically because then they'd be in charge of posting specific information to social media for the club. And your name again is? Caitlin. Caitlin, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, can we communicate with you to talk about that social media page and then with your teacher? Is that okay? Yes, I put my okay. email in the chat. It's uh, Salga, S-A-L-G, okay. and then it continues on. And then also in the chat, I might put some other emails for other teachers, but first I have to email them because they're in charge of different clubs that I'm a part in. So I have to email them and ask if they would be interested. So we appreciate all the students' input. So any input you can give us, it's, it'd be helpful for us. So it's don't worry about it being too much. It's like if you guys send us an email every other day, that's okay. You know, or however you communicate, Instagram, that would be fine uh, because we're looking for your input from from all of you. So thanks, thanks for that. So the next item on the list is the styrofoam recycling options. So. I know that, uh, why don't we start with Shelly, and then I know, Diana, you had some uh, information about that as well. Um, thanks, Jack, for reaching out to um, Swalco and stuff like that. Uh, I, I was surprised that I only thought that the village of Highland Park only did um, it didn't do like containers, food containers and stuff, but it didn't say that it didn't. Um, so another place to possibly reach out and find out how they do it, and I'm sure they do it on a huge scale, is APT, um, Styrofoam. But I was, I, I was thinking that everybody was thinking that the problem was the fact that Highland Park had to hire two uh, part-time employees to do it. 
I'm thinking with all this youth and excitement that we can maybe, and if we do it on a limited basis, we don't have to do it every day and keep it um, on a, a, maybe once or twice a month, at least in, um, that we could have volunteers man it if we were trained properly of what materials and how cleanly it has to be for dark to pick it up. But I think it's, it's a really doable thing. And as you said, uh, with all the, um, the Amazon boxes we're getting, we're uh, generating an ever increasing amount of that. So it'd be nice to have a solution that's more sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, small way, Diane, how about you? Yes, I, this comes to us from the neighborhood group and it there is already a recycling program for foam drop off and it's being done through the city of Highland Park but it's for all of Lake County which I thought was good and they have it every Tuesday and the first Saturday of the month and they give the times and they will pretty much take anything it's a drop off on Half Day Road which is easy to get to um it started in 2015. It doesn't say anything about uh, how many employees they have to have, but the main companies are DART and um, PACTIV, P-A-C-T-I-V. I think we're familiar with them. And what they do is they collect all of the foam and guess who they take it to? They take it to companies that are making picture frames of all things. So that's where the stuff ends up. I was surprised. And as soon as the storage container is full at the um, half day road facility, they take it out and they bring in another one. So it isn't as though if it's full, you have to wait till the next month or week. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, and they transport well, to North Aurora. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's far. I mean, it's on the very South. That's what brought me this to my attention because I bought some stuff and I couldn't put, couldn't bear to put it in the trash. It was so much. And I right. looked to see where it was and I had to go all the way to Highland Park. We're all the way in Gurney. So maybe it's not just for Gurney. Uh, we do it for people who of Lake County uh, and the Northern because yeah. at least two options because apt, that's in Cook County. So well, this is this is all of Lake County. They're doing it for all of Lake County. I'm not but you're saying it's a geographical. That. Right. I, well, it's it's a hike. I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta plan for it. It's not an easy. You gotta make recycling as easy for people as possible. And if you're telling people they gotta drive all the way to Highland Park, and they live in Antioch, or they live in Gurney, or they live in mm -hmm. Lindenhurst, they're generally, unless they're insane like I am, they're not gonna make the trip. There are two other ways that I personally do recycling. And that's, I open the packages at the store and just leave it at the store and then they handle it. So when I got my PC, my laptop, I opened the box, I took out all of the, all of the packaging and I left it at Best Buy and they had no problem with it. Same thing for TVs where they've got all that foam packaging around it. I leave it at the store, even for cosmetics, I leave it at the store. So that, that's something that we could, and there, there's no problem with the store doing it. They don't say, hey, take it home. But that would be something to put on our info sheets to our residents. That That's something that they could do. Well, but, they may say there's no problem and then they throw it in the trash. Um, I know Best Buy is good because they're like apt. But I don't, um, I mean, how are you going to take the foam off of a giant TV before you take it home? You have to bring it back to them. So it seems like a, it could be a good solution that we can learn from what they're doing in Highland Park and then see what it's like to locate up here. So I, I think I that's have their, information. I have yes. their flyer. I'll be happy to send it to somebody, but I didn't have an email address to send it to. We got one. I think Jack might have sent that to us. Yeah, I, sent, I, I sent out the, uh, oh, okay. the web page for it. 
Somebody did. Thank the blue you. Blue and green. The blue and green. Yeah, but, okay. Yeah, that, yeah, for the fire for it. So yeah, so we do have some information on that. We also have some information too from Swalco directly because they helped set that program up. Kind of a little bit of the backstory of how it how it came to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of it did spark from Highland Park was looking to do a styrofoam ban back at the time, mm -hmm. and actually Dart and the others kind of stepped in and said we could do this. You know, containerized program, recycle it for you. The only negative of it is the staffing requirement. So it does require. Um, they essentially, they pay two part-time public works employees to come on those two days and work it. Um, for us, I will say that's not something that we've had too much flexibility, especially if it's on the weekend. Now mm -hmm. we have done electric, electronic recycling this way. We did one, um, I think it's only, uh, almost been a year now, but we did one in the spring where at public works, we bring a 20 yard or a couple 20 yard dumpsters. People bring the electronics and the private vendors will take them away. So one option we could do if it was a quarterly, we could consider doing maybe a quarterly drop off um, using our own in resources with Dart or Pactiv um, doing the pickup. That's something we could probably pull off. The question is if we have it more permanent, um, how we would do it, where we do it. Um, so that's one thing I think that, you know, we, we'd want to consider with that. Okay, thanks, Jack. I appreciate that. Is it a good question? Is it, is it, just Gurney or is it, will it be like, I mean, like County as well? I don't know. Yeah. It would other, be maybe other venue or other municipalities can pitch in um, if it's open for every everyone to help pay the salary if you go that route for a, someone to man the, the process. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's always a little tricky. So for most of the recycling, um, the Village of Grays Lake, actually, they've been, in a lot of ways, they, they use their staff for it. So they're the recycling drop-off center for most of Western Lake County. Um, so for Gurney residents, too, if you have a TV to bring, you bring it to Grays Lake Public Works. Um, you can bring extra recycling if you have an extra bag. There's, there's a lot of stuff you can do at their facility. They just don't take, um, styrofoam is one of the few things they don't take. So, but they do that. Um, the village pays for that and the rest of Lake County benefits as part of Swalco. So that's where we, you know, I mean, we are members of Swalco, our residents benefit from that. So every now and then we can consider doing our own kind of in kind where, you know, we do stuff that benefits more than Gurney for the good of, the, of Swalco and the county too. So we'd be open to that. It's more of just a permanent long-term, you know, especially if it's on weekends too, that makes it tough because we're paying for overtime. But if we have staff already on site and it's during a weekday, um, we have a lot more flexibility. I don't know about insurance liability and, and things like that, but what if there were volunteers? Is that an option? It's it's still insurance. I know. I just there's... yeah, I would say it would be an option. I, I think in a lot of ways, you know, would be easier. Um, one thing, and I think it is something that we could consider for a short term too. Kind of to bring up actually with Diane's point earlier as we were talking about the private sector, um, one of the things that Swalco is also a <clears throat> it's also a legislative body too. So we as Swalco we advocate on behalf of the county for recycling, for trash, and so we have a lobbyist through Swalco. And one of the initiatives that has been pushed and is pushed more and more is for manufacturers to step up and take back their products. So we've been pushing that with electronics that if you bought your TV at Best Buy, 10 years later, Best Buy should take back your TV. And industry obviously has pushed back a bit on that, but we've actually had a lot of really good luck recently with Sharps um, and medications, Walgreens and CVS have stepped up because a lot of times they would sell the medications and then it was up to municipalities to get rid of them, essentially. Um, so that's kind of where there is some movement. And I also know that Styrofoam is one that they are looking for more of the commercial entities to kind of step up and and offer a, a drop off you know that similar to plastic bags plastic bag drop off has grown substantially so that many of the vendors that you know you go to the grocery store they also have a drop off something that we could push for to advocacy wise for the, the industry to step up and do that too so all right so it sounds like we have a lot of good ideas so let's um offline let's see what we can put together so that, that sounds good. All right, so we're at the part of public, public. comment.
So if anybody would like to make any public comment, please do that. Uh, Diane? I will. Um, I'm interested in joining this committee. I've done a lot of environmental work with my church, which is North Shore Unitarian Church on half day. I know it's down at the other end of the county, but don't hold it against us. But we've been recycling for years and it's other programs other than the styrofoam. It's eyeglasses, it's tennis shoes. And it, not that the shoes are going to other people, but they're being, uh, how can I say, disassembled and then given to other people for parts. Um, the eyeglasses are of course given to the lions. But what I'm thinking of is a one-stop shop for recycling. Definitely don't take clothes. But when you were talking about the plastic bags, this is a need right now because none of the stores are taking plastic bags right now because of COVID. So I mentioned that. Um, Swalco, this would be for the info, they take TVs, they take cords, they'll take seven things a month. So I took two TVs over there and it's not that far for me to go, but it is a convenient drop off and people don't know. The one thing that I, if I recall, nobody will take our cassette tapes with tape and the plastic boxes. They won't take those. Um, what about paper shredding? The only people I know that will do shredding are, um, I know, uh, I'm blocking on her name. Um, Grace Lake, the politician, I'm blocking on her name. She has it once, once every quarter, once every six months that she'll have the big truck and then you come and you leave your, I think it's maximum of two, two boxes of paper you can leave there for recycling. Um, there's another recycling place that was out. I didn't have time to pull it down, but out on um, the town square where you can take three boxes to have shred and they do it right there. And it's all you know, pretty much for free. So this would be another thing for the environment to get it out of the environment and move this stuff along. So Diane, I could talk to you uh, offline about the being on the committee and the process and the whole thing. Okay, so, okay. so I'll talk okay. to you. Thank you for that. Sure. Does anybody else have any public comment? Any of the students or? Oh, one other. Go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to respond to Diane about paper shredding because that was something I was concerned about as well. I found out that if you have your own personal paper shredder, if you shred it and you put it in a paper bag and then you staple the bag shut, mm -hmm. then you can put it in your curbside recycling, but you just can't put in loose shredded paper in your recycling because it's, it's just too small right and they just can't handle it so right for me i need the boxes right now i've got 14 cases to have shredded because i've been on a homeowner association i've got stuff from school confidential and the fact that they shred it right in front of me gives my heart joy rather than putting it in one of their containers they take off site and you're, you're trusting that they're going to shred it so to help kind of jump in on that too. I know a couple of the options, because we get those calls from residents looking for options. So you mentioned it's Paper Tiger, is, it's a gurney business. Um, they do the monthly shred, so they do Shred Fest, they call it. They are a for profit, so it is, I think, $5 per banker box to shred. Um, okay. That's a monthly one that they do. And then Warren Township, uh, the township usually does an uh, annual shred. So a lot of municipalities will do a free shred. And how and why they do that is so. We, you know, I mean, we have documents that we need to shred too. And mm -hmm. so usually what you do is then you hire, it's per hour, you pay for the truck and it's a flat rate of like four hours for the truck. So you get the truck for four hours, you pay $500, something like that. Um, <clears throat> and what you'll do is you'll shred your documents and then you give it for the residents too, to use that they can shred as well. It's kind of, we actually have a, a nice setup with Paper Tiger. So Paper Tiger is our shredding company. Uh, we do other shreds, and so they take the boxes for us at a much reduced rate for us. So it's a it's a cost savings that we take advantage of. They pick up the boxes directly from us, so it's an efficiency thing. That, so we don't offer it, but some municipalities in the area do offer it, and Warren Township is open to residents too. So a couple of the options that are out there. 
when the truck comes, do they shred right on property? Yes, so Paper Tiger, I know their system, it's actually at their facility, they'll shred on property um, and Warren Township will as well. So, cause it's, you know, the, the truck's there and they, they certify that it's destroyed. All right, so um, if I'd like to try to honor the one hour time, the two to three time spots. So unless somebody has some other comments, then um, our next meeting, Jack will be. Our next meeting. Well, so originally this is one of the discussions we can have. So the students, I'm glad to see you here. Um, the the um, teachers, if we're concerned that this is still during the, the class day at Warren. So is it more convenient? We had scheduled every second Tuesday of the month at, or sorry, every second Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, is it more convenient if we pushed it back for the committee in general, if there's any opposition, that could be something that we would want to discuss too, if we wanted to move it to 3.30 that's something that's preferred that uh, three o'clock would be better because almond and oplane have different end times so the juniors and seniors get out early but um the oplane campus doesn't so most students are still in school at two but by three three fifteen even most students are out of school and be able to join a, a zoom call easier okay so three, maybe okay. three o'clock would work now next week we start a new schedule so oplane won't finish till three fifteen. but some students are going to be in school so I'd say to be safe, we shouldn't start till 3.30. So then all O'Plain students would be at home and be ready. And then also, I was just curious if you could add it to the, the agenda for the next meeting, something about composting, if uh, we could do composting, like have a compost bin. And then if you have any questions, uh, you can email me. So then I have your email and I can get back to you. That's good. So, Jack, it sounds like if we can for the rest of the committee, are you guys okay with 3.30 on the second Wednesday? Yes, I'm fine with that. Rick? 3.30 would work for me. All right. 3.30 on the second one. Well, Jack, I take it that's, how about you? You're okay? Yep, that works for me. So, I can, we have the schedule out there and noticed, but it's not a problem to change it. Okay. So, the second Wednesday at 3.30, and that'll be um, every month. So that's uh, our next meeting will be in March, whatever that date is. So it'll be February 10th, 3.30. And for the students as well, um, maybe we'd have some discussion. We'd like to have uh, at least one of you formally on the committee. And we certainly would like to have as many students as would like to attend the Zoom meetings, but we'd like to have at least one of you if you're interested. And you could talk to us offline about that, about being a member of the committee. And then the uh, mayor would, uh, would appoint you. Right, Jack? Yes, correct. So would to be an official voting member does require appointment. So you would need to be appointed by the village board. Um, there isn't necessarily a restriction the committee was started to be small just for, you know, for flexibility. Um, but that's, you know, working with Tom, you can figure out membership. So if you would, if any of the students would like to email Jack to say, hey, I'm interested in that, um, that would be good. Then we would uh, talk to you direct and then um, talk to the village board about having you appointed to the committee. Any other public comment? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. All right. And I second the motion. All right. First by Shelley, second by Rick. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion. So we're adjourned. Thank you very much.